Things which are irksome and depressing. A dog howling in the late afternoon. A birthing room where the baby has died. A red plum blossom gown worn in the wrong month. Very irksome. More so are drunken men who continue to talk loudly while picking scraps from their teeth. One invites a new lover to spend the night to discover he is a snorer, extremely irksome. Persistent rain on the day a picnic has been planned. A priest whose sermon, however true, however worthy, goes on and on and on. Most irksome, most depressing. Indeed, and especially if the priest is an ugly man, one becomes so depressed one ceases to listen. What is the truth of suffering? Birth is suffering, decay is suffering, death is suffering, association with those one does not love is suffering, parting from those one loves is suffering. Excellent, Naramessa. One, what is birth? It is the coming into existence of a being belonging to this or that order of being. Most excellent. Two, what is decay? Our palace is blessed with such a fine exponent of scripture as our Naramasa. Thank you, Your Majesty. But now, I think, something of a more worldly nature. Worldly, Your Majesty? We might have a poem from Tadanobu. Majesty. Or perhaps a song from Seisho. Thank you, Lord Tadanobu. And perhaps Her Majesty would accompany me with her lute? I think not this evening. I'm not in the mood to play. Shonagan. Your Majesty. Let us have some of your lines. A few of your... Well, what do you call them? Observations? Musings? Epigrams? Hardly the last, Your Majesty. Shonagan's words may be bright as a blade, but whom may they pierce? Our wonderful poet, swordsman and courtier, Lord Tadanobu, is correct, of course. But if I were given a subject... Splendid. Let's see. But there it is, splendid things. Give us some things that are splendid. A sword where the decorated scabbard is splendid. When one can be sure that the edge is as keen as the decoration is elegant. Chinese brocade, wisteria branches in flower entwined about a pine tree. That is good. Purple things are often splendid, be they flowers, embroidery, the sea at sunset. All are exceeded by the splendour of our Empress's robe. Ah, oh, dear Shonagan. What word could describe a line like that? I have one. I have a new one. I have one that will fox you all. Your Majesty, Majesty glorious Emperor. You see what I have here? It is not too great an intrusion, my Highness. Of course not, my Highness. And we see you have a log. I have a birch log. Two feet long and the same thickness its entire length. You see? Indeed. You all note that? No difference in thickness at any point. Yes, yes Your Majesty. So, which end is the top and which the bottom? Top and bottom? I mean, which end is the trunk end? Which end was affixed to the tree? May I examine it more closely, Your Majesty? You may, Lord Tadnobu. It has been planed. It's smooth and glossy, perfectly round. Each end, too, is identically smooth. I see no way of deciding. I thought not. I knew none of you could decipher this one. Then I shall tell you. Highness, my Shonagan has raised a hand. Shonagan? Your Majesty, I think, perhaps, if you threw the log into the river... Into the river? I think so, Lord Tadanobo. I think if you did that, the flow of the water, it would turn the base downstream. The, the trunk end of the log would point downstream. Why would it do that? Because it is more... The woody material there is more... What is the word? Dense. Mm. Well, she is right. My clever Shonagan. Clever Shonagan. Many years ago, the Emperor of China tested an earlier majesty of ours with the same question. I read about it in an old chronicle. Well read, Shonagan. My father always encouraged me to read. Your father the poet? Yes, Lord Tadanobu. Although few would say his verses were a match for yours. Few? Very few. And you and I, I wonder... You and I? If I were to present you with a verse of mine especially written for you... That would be an honour, indeed. I wonder if you would be able to compose an elegant enough reply. That would be a challenge, indeed. Later tonight, perhaps? Or is it already too late? 
It would take me some time to compose something worthy of your intelligence and beauty. My lord, it would certainly take me hours to compose a reply that I might be bold enough to show you. Might even take all night. An intelligent and pretty reply. Her Majesty suspects me. Suspects you of what, Seisha? Of being the thief. Why would she think such a thing? She hasn't asked me to sing for three oh, weeks. Seisha. Don't say you haven't noticed. We must all be obedient to the whims of our mistress. And tonight she said she was not in the mood to play. There have been seven thefts, and each item stolen more valuable than the last. From your papers and ink to a ceremonial dagger from the captain of the guard's private room. I love it. On every occasion, Shonagon, I have been in a position to take these things. Well, so have many of them. You have been in the captain's private room. Open it, Seisho. Lord Tanobu. Leave us, Seisho. Forgive me, Shonagan. I'm even later than I intended. No matter. It is perhaps too late for verses now. Well, I do think my poor brain is too tired even to aspire to match such lines as yours. But at this hour, can you think of making the long journey to your home? I believe it has begun to snow. It has. Some wine, my lord? Thank you. Sweet wine. In your own glass? Of course. As always, Shonagon. Other things that are splendid. In winter, the early morning, when snow has fallen during the night. Splendid, too, when the ground is covered with glinting frost. An imperial procession by the Empress at winter dawn, all we ladies bowing as she passes. The garden of the Emperor, his smile at the heaped up snow. The heaped up blankets on a cold, cold night. And the whispered endearments of a lover. Malo? Is it time to go? Shall I light a lamp for you? One's attachment to a man depends a great deal on the elegance of his leave taking. Who are you? Not the man you invited to share your bed. Who? The man who took pleasure in you. A lamp. I will have a light. A woman will yield again to a man who has taken pleasure in her. And a warrior will die for a friend. Ah, now, a well-read woman. Clever, Shonigan. Who are you? Shonigan. What's wrong? Nothing, my lord. Nothing? <laughs> Only a dream. A strange dream. Shonigan. Shonigan, forgive me. Seisha? You must come. Come where? To the throne room. It's not yet dawn. Trouble. The thief. He struck again, and this time, oh, oh Shonagan. Say so. My lord. Calm yourself and tell us. The Empress, my lord. Her own room. Something has been stolen from the Empress's room. My loot. My own loot has been taken. From my highness in a chamber. Scandalous. It is worse than scandal. It is blasphemy. This thief has gone beyond boldness. Blasphemy! He will be found. It is imperative. Found and punished in hell. When did Her Majesty discover the instrument was gone? When I woke this morning. It had been hanging by my bedside. Hanging there when Her Majesty retired. Then you mean... He must have entered Her Majesty's room. While I slept. The gods will scold him in hell. Or her. Shonagan? Forgive me, Your Majesty. Somehow I had always imagined a thief to be a woman. The things that were stolen, my paper and ink, a hand mirror, the scales from the kitchen. And the ceremonial dagger, taken from the private room of the captain of the guard, I believe. Now, what would a woman want with such a weapon? I do beg your pardon, Your Majesty. No, you can hurry. You must speak freely. Share your knowledge and expertise. Unravel this matter for us. It is why you are here. Shonagan, are you all right? Yes. You look faint, my dear. Would you like to sit down? No, thank you, Your Majesty. I'm fine. <laughs> 
She must not be sick in the throne room. It will pass, Your Majesties. I slept badly. That's all bad dreams. Strange, strange voices in my dreams. I wonder, My Highness, if Shunagan is the right choice. She is. Choice, Your Majesty. Will you explain, My Highness? Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Yukinari, Lieutenant of the Imperial Police. I have summoned him here to find our blasphemous thief, since our own guard have been unable to do so. I have their own weapons taken from them. Indeed. Yukinari has granted all freedom and authority to conduct his investigation. He may move freely throughout the palace. He has authority to question anyone, and you, Shonigan. Your Majesty. Our Empress appoints you his companion. Companion? And guide. The Lieutenant is unfamiliar with the ways of the palace. And who better than you, Shonigan, to be his guide and assistant? You know our ways as well as anyone. And you know this devil must be caught. My own black ebony lute, Shonigan. We hear the voice of the lute across the water. We search the darkness in wonder. Who can this player be? Ah, our lieutenant too is well read. But perhaps, Your Majesty, we need more than an educated policeman. Perhaps we need an exorcist. Things that surprise and distress. A child in a company of adults blurts out something that is a secret between two of the adults. One is cleaning a comb. One catches a tooth and the entire comb snaps. A carriage overturns, so solid, large and heavy, and yet it may overturn. Surprising, distressing. One waits all night for a lover one is sure will come, there is no doubt. And then one wakes alone. The sun rises and a crow calls mockery. One hears in a dream a stranger's voice and in the morning one meets a stranger. He speaks in the same voice. Surprise. Distress. <laughs>